Atheist Nomads episode 401, Sedans, adding in separation of church and state. The podcast you're about to listen to includes cursing and talking about hoo-hahs. Please be advised. Welcome to another episode of Atheist Nomads. I am Dustin and joining me is Lauren. Hello. And uh, yeah, uh, we started recording and then it paused the recording and I don't know why, so we're going again. Well, there's um, so many blinky buttons. How can you keep track? <laughs> hey, at least it's not a live stream <laughs> where I've got that distraction. Would have, would have been guaranteed to have happened. Yeah, man. I still feel bad about screwing that up with that's, the last episode. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. It makes it more real, man. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Lauren, you got your, your co- first COVID shot now. Yes, I, I did. Um, Idaho has opened up their uh, COVID to... Anybody over the age of 16, uh, this week it's anybody with a comorbidity. Mm-hmm. Uh, next week is the general population, and obesity counts. So since and I, so does the asthma. And e- borderline on that yeah. one. It's not considered a major right. comor- comorbidity. Uh, but th- since they don't ask you when you show up, it doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I qualified because I'm overweight, so that's useful. <laughs> <laughs> uh i was su- it was super exciting though so that that was that was a fun experience didn't feel anything um i just had major uh sleepy crashness today uh but I basically f- slept for three or four hours this afternoon right so basically you're normal but a little bit worse way worse it, f- it feels way worse yeah um but other than that no other real symptoms a little nausea i guess but that may be normal yeah, I know when I got my first one, my left arm where they did the injection hurt like hell for like four days. Yeah, you got but a bad injection. That was a bad injection. The second one, I barely felt it going in, whereas the first one, it felt like the needle was still in 10 seconds after it had been removed. Yeah. That was yeah. a bad injection that caused physical damage that caused pain. I got so many compliments on my name, though. Oh. <laughs> Every single person who checked me in complimented me on my name. So the guy who checks you in initially, then the person who was doing the, you know, who, who was getting you ready, and then the person who was giving the shot, and then the person who walked me to the chairs. No. Oh. They all they were like, sweet last name. Yeah. <laughs> cool. That was cool. Yeah, yeah. Got to talk about corgis with one of them. Oh, nice. Yep, good time. Yeah. All right, let's uh, go ahead and move on to news. All right, before I totally fade out. James Huntsman is a name that, to me, when I saw this article, sounds familiar, but not. Like, like I could almost be sure that I'd seen that name in a bunch of news articles, but not quite. Uh, It's because he's from a prominent Mormon family from Utah and is not somebody who's really been in the news before. That's his brother. Well, brothers, but mostly just the one brother. Because his brother is John Huntsman, who was the governor of Utah and U.S. ambassador to Singapore, China, and Russia. So, So he was either really good or people really hated him. He worked in the Reagan administration. <laughs> it's like, just send him to Russia. <laughs> well, he, was, he worked in the Reagan administration. He then moved to uh, US tr- one of the like, assistant U.S. trade representative, then entered to Singapore under George H.W. Bush, was governor of Utah, then was Obama's ambassador to China, and then Trump's ambassador to Russia. <laughs> so I immediately don't trust him. <laughs> He was generally anybody that Trump would send to be his main liaison with, you know, with Russia, with Russia's has got to be on the uh, on the books. But having been Obama's guy for China. Yeah, that's true. It's like, yeah, he's just really good at selling himself, apparently. But that's not the guy we're actually talking about with this story. Right. We're talking about his brother, James, little, who little Jimmy wants millions of dollars back from the Mormon church and has filed a federal lawsuit, fraud lawsuit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, as a prominent Utah family, uh-huh. they are part of the L- LDS and uh, they've been giving millions and millions to the LDS and that was that probably in tithing and in donations. Mm-hmm. And that's all supposed to go to uh, s- certain things. Yeah. 
it, tithe should be should be going to support the work of the church and missionaries charity usually and charity yeah so in the mormon church it should be going to the mormon welfare programs and the maintenance of the buildings and the paying of the top church officials and funding of missionaries yeah the the typical stuff you'd expect from a church in normal churches tithe goes to pay pastor salaries Mormons don't do that. Instead of paying their equivalent to pastors' salaries, they amass all of the money into a giant fortune that is capable of crashing the global economy. Yeah. And the Huntsman family saw this, and James Huntsman looked at it and was like, oh, yeah, that's not right. Especially since Ensign Peak Advisors, the Mormon church's equity fund has used that money to prop up at least two businesses including the city creek mall a developer's nightmare yeah and uh it cost the the church a lot of money well the the because the mall was set up as a basically a joint venture between the mormon church and a private development fund that was probably almost completely run and owned okay that I'm sure was completely owned and funded by Mormons. Why would the Mormons want a strip mall? It was to help boost downtown Salt Lake for the Olympics. And it's not a strip mall. It is a mall. Okay. They built a, a giant... It's a freaking mall. They built a giant mall in the middle of downtown in the 2000s when malls were in decline and downtowns were on the rebound. Malls being a suburban thing. They needed more restaurants and bars to sell funeral potatoes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but instead, they put in a giant mall that wasn't able to turn a profit, was about to go under so the Mormon church's equity fund, propped it back up. Uh, they also uh, gave, that was in, they also used money to um, help out Beneficial Life, a, uh, Life insurance company that almost went under in 2009. Oof. These, yeah, these do sound like terrible business decisions. Like, what the hell are you invest? I do know that. Th besides that, they're also investing tons of money in stuff like Amazon and Tesla, and they've mm -hmm. been making so much money off of yeah. that. This other stuff is just pennies. This is money that. they're going to help high-profile Mormons keep them from losing money, so they can keep giving them money. Yeah. This is yeah. reinvesting in their community. Supposedly. But not in their community in the way most people would think, as in Salt Lake, but reinvesting back into their communities and the Mormon church and its members. Well, yeah. It's the rich Mormon, members. The Mormon church hates most of Salt Lake City. Yeah. Salt Lake City hates most of the Mormon church. Yeah. Uh, that's not a great relationship there. So, of course, they're, they don't care anything uh, about... The people of Salt Lake City, they're not going to give them anything. But if they can make a couple billion more dollars on the side, they're going to do that. Yeah. So, is, yeah. So James Huntsman wants his tithe money back because his millions of dollars in tithe money was clearly not going to the work of the church. It was being used as venture capital. Yep. Without him knowing it. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That sounds like pretty, you know... If it was going to the church, that's one thing. That's voluntary tithing. That's a thing. But when your money is then diverted into venture capital and you don't get to have any say in it, you don't get any benefits from it, it's, you're not an investor. You're not on the board. Yeah. You're just some low-level sap who happens to have a very rich and prominent family right. back you up. And we wouldn't have known about any of this if not for... The whistleblower complaint 16 months ago when a employee of that firm tipped off the IRS as to what was actually going on because they had been operating as a church entity with no filings right. or disclosures of any kind. Now they're, they're actually doing the disclosures as to what money they hold. And what assets they hold. And you know, this, is, this is one of those things that- It's just too bad we'll never get taxes out of them. Well- no, never. Uh, it's not uncommon for nonprofit organizations to own 
for-profit subsidiaries so that all the profits go into the non-profit and are all tax deductible so they don't pay any taxes ever. Plus, if you're over a cer- if you make over a certain amount of money and you uh, screw over the IRS, they're not going to come for you anyway. No, <laughs> nope. Um, so in, in this case, though, the the lawsuit's going to go to court. The court's going to look at it as you gave money to a church. The church used that money how they decided, and no court in the United States is going to touch that. Right. Especially with the Mormon church. And they're, what is it, five or six senators and like 25 members of the House of Representatives? <laughs> Mormons are majorly overrepresented in Congress, like terrifyingly overrepresented in Congress. Yeah, there's not a chance in hell this is going to go anywhere. But it's still really cool to see, especially from a prominent family with at least the last name having relatively general name recognition. Did you say he ran for president? Uh, the brother? John Huntsman, the brother, yes. He ran, he ran for president in 2016 against Trump and then was one of the two people who ran against Trump in the 2020 primary. Like, Stuck with it. He served in the Trump administration and then left and then ran against Trump. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And what's funny is the, the, the three brothers, you have James, who filed the lawsuit. He worked in Hollywood. You have John, who worked in politics, and the other brother, Paul, bought the Salt Lake Tribune, the largest newspaper in Utah, in 2016 and turned it into a nonprofit in 2019, giving up ownership, but still staying on as chairman of the board. Mm. So all in all, this is a family that seems not terrible. There is a subset of progressive uh, Mormons Mm -hmm. out there. Um, These guys seem to be leaning that way. It's kind of hard to imagine, but... yeah. Um, It's now become known that the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops spent 2019 quietly lobbying against the creation of a national suicide hotline. For gays. Because it would include support for gay people. Oh, okay. So it wasn't a... uh, uh, an emergency line for people who were suffering from some kind of gender identity crisis or or were homosexual nope it was for everybody yep but also the gays so so let's shut that down yep national suicide right, because hotline. they're less than people and they don't deserve to live right and when Fucking you catholics when you look at the statistics uh young gay people and young trans people are the most likely by far to attempt and to successfully commit suicide like across almost any demographic group they're also the highest demographic groups to face homelessness as teenagers which leads often can lead to suicide attempts or successful suicide so of course any suicide hotline of any value would cover the most high risk groups for suicide yeah it would be like saying you're lobbying against a suicide hotline because you don't want people who take antidepressants to have access to a suicide help. People with depression are also pretty highly likely to commit suicide, and you want them to have access to that. God. It's just... Every once in a while, you'll see had something about some, somebody on a suicide hotline basically telling the person to go ahead and off themselves because... Mm-hmm terrible people that's basically what the catholics are doing all right so what they're claiming in their 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 statement they finally gave when they had to fess up to this was quote all persons must be protected from violence but codifying the classifications sexual orientation and gender identity is contained in senate bill 47 is problematic the bill specifically mentioned sexual orientation and gender gender identity Right. I'm sure it also covered things like schizophrenia, bipolar, depression, divorce, bereavement, miscarriages. Why do they have to list that out at all? If you're going to be setting up a program, generally the laws for setting up programs like that are incredibly verbose because they don't want some administrator to look at it and be like, well, the law doesn't say what we have to cover. So we're only going to train our staff on these things Mm. and not these other things. So if you codify it all and then usually include a blanket and anything else reasonably determined to put somebody at increased risk of 
attempting or or thinking about suicide. Yeah, you, you, you gotta name it. Yeah, I can see that. But because they named gender identity and sexual orientation, the Catholic Church actively lobbied against a suicide hotline. Well, that's why they can't get protections anywhere else. I largely believe that Add the Words um, in Idaho has been shut down largely due to a Catholic governor. Yeah. It didn't have a chance. It doesn't help that the Mormons were against it, too. But between those two religious groups, it didn't have a chance of getting anywhere. Right, because... They Butch, want, Butch it, Otter was governor for 12 years. Most of Add the Words was during time's up, and time. he, he's Catholic. It's been, yeah. And Episcopalian. Oh, okay. So as generic, like not generic Christian, that's... No, absolutely generic Christian. But about as generic mainstream Christian as you can get. In Florida, Duval County Public Schools is considering changing the name of Robert E. Lee High School. You know, they're... I thought they did that years ago. Other maybe places have. Other places have, yeah. There's still a couple out there, I guess. Yeah, um, a lot of people don't realize... Like, if, if you when you think of Florida, you think of Miami. You're not going to think of Florida... Yeah, if you think of more Tallahassee, it's the like the only person I who was a Southerner with a thick Southern accent who said that the Civil War was because they wanted to take away their guns and the South will rise again was someone from Florida. No, you can't judge an entire state on no. one person, but um, there isn't just one person. No, there's an entire podcast about Florida. No, not anymore. Oh. No, nope. Florida man is gone. Florida man's gone. Oh, too bad. That was a good run. Yeah, it, it's missed. Um, but yeah, so they were having so at the board meeting where they're discussing this. Um, one person in attendance had to complain about Christians being behind changing the name. And there's one problem with Discord. And let's see if anybody else is. Nope, nobody else is listening. One of them mentioned Christianity. And that, uh, you know, if you're Christians, you shouldn't stand for this. Well, that's awfully funny that you want to bring up Christianity when it says in the Bible, Jesus himself never condemned slavery. In fact, he said slaves have an obligation to uh, to, um, obey their master. So if you're going to throw around Christianity, say both sides. He actually gave the both sides argument on Christian support of slavery. He's not wrong. Just kind of throwing the ridiculousness out there. Yeah. No, you know, if you if you look at the, the, the Civil War, the best Christian arguments were on the Southern pro slavery side. What you had in the North tended to be the less religiously motivated and more humanistic arguments for abolishing slavery. The South actually had the Bible on their side. The North had to look for better ethics than the Bible. We're still doing that. Mm -hmm. Racism is still, I mean, every Mm -hmm. single day, racism is is a major part of this country's problems. And there are a whole segment of the population that basically agrees that they're not going to change their mind because the Bible's on their side. And if you're not white, why should they care? what happens to you and sucks yeah and i can't say it's it's surprising to hear somebody actually say that i know nobody who does atheist podcasts or listens to a bunch of atheist podcasts would be surprised that there's christians actually saying there's nothing wrong with slavery but also at the same time it really sucks that we live in the time period where the racists don't feel like they need to keep quiet about it yeah they feel like they're fine they're justified Actually, because people in power are supporting them. Or people who... Honestly, it's the Christians who are all lovey-dovey that drive me crazy. Because they're, <laughs> the, they're the hypocritical ones. Uh, they're the people that are better than their book. Yeah. We should applaud people for being better than their book and better than their religion. I we mean, sh- obviously, I want more of those people in the world, but they can't, they can't be claiming Jesus was colorblind. Oh, no. No. Or, it- you know, that... God is an uh, all-loving entity when it's clearly not. Right. When you try, try to make religious arguments for accepting gay people into churches, that doesn't work. If you try to make religious arguments for accepting black people in your churches, that doesn't work. 
if you want to make religious arguments for opposing slavery, it doesn't work. You have to rely on humanistic arguments for all of those things. And in an ideal world, Christianity would move beyond the Bible as the basis of their ethics and would move on to humanism. And if that was what Christianity was, we wouldn't be doing this podcast. Right. Yeah. The junior senator from Mississippi, Cindy Hyde-Smith, spoke at a Senate campaign finance committee hearing defending Georgia's voter suppression bill. Okay. She said, quote, Georgia is a southern state just like Mississippi, and I cannot speak for Georgia, but I can speak for Mississippi on why we would never do that on, a on Sunday or hold an election on Sunday, end quote. She then went on to say, it's on our currency, um, quote, the United States of America and God we trust, etched in stone in the United States chim uh, Senate chamber, is in God we trust. When you swore on all those witnesses, the last thing you said to them in your instructions was, so help you God and God's word in Exodus 2018. It says, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy, end quote. Who's doing elections on a Sunday? Early voting. That's different. Allowing all week voting is different than holding elections on a Sunday. Uh -huh. But I digress. Election day is a Tuesday. Georgia's latest voter suppression bill is that, that has passed and been signed into law eliminates early voting on Sunday. Yeah. The main argument against that bill has been that's when black people vote. That's usually the only day of the week they have off. And it's when the black churches are doing their get out the vote drives. So after church, their members are going and doing early voting. So by getting rid of early voting on Sunday, you're going to eliminate. Wait, wait, wait. Are you saying this was racist? <laughs> yeah. And signed under a giant painting of a plantation? <laughs> Georgia. God damn it. Yeah. Yeah. So Hyde Smith, she's quoting it as being for the Sabbath. Mm-hmm. She cited Exodus Funny thing about that. 2018. Well, it's actually 20 verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall do all your labor, and the seventh you shall rest. The seventh day, not the first day. This is a of course, seventh day Adventist background. That's, yes. That's the argument is that Saturday. Uh -huh. It is the last day of the week, uh -huh. the seventh day. That's the day you should be resting. Right. And How it got to Sunday, I... It's a long story with Roman persecution and... The, okay, the, so the, the, the early church would... They did Easter every week with a Friday... That sounds exhausting. A Friday night commemorating of the crucifixion and then fasting all day Saturday and then you'd have a... Resurrection Feast Sunday morning. And the the main service early on was on Saturday, following with the Jewish Sabbath. But over time, because, well, if you're not eating and you haven't eaten since the sun went down the day before, you're not going to want to sit through a long meeting. The Saturday meeting became less popular and the Sunday meeting became more popular. And then the Roman Jewish War happened around the same time. And so there's peace, persecution of Jews. And then there was confusion about whether Christianity was a Jewish, se Jewish sect or something separate. And if it was a Jewish sect, then it was illegal under the anti-Jewish laws of the uh, Jewish Roman Wars. And if it was something different, then, well, it wasn't. <laughs> and the Romans were had a, had a tendency to commemorate Sunday as the Day of the Sun with Sol and Sol Invictus. So that wasn't a bad idea to blend in. And by doing their main service on Sunday, they were able to blend in and not look like Jews. The big thing was to not look like Jews. Right. So that's hilarious. And then by the time you get to the Puritans... Which is why you could never use the generic term Sabbath if you're talking about a specific day of the week. Unless you're, you know, Unless evangelical you know, Christian and you think everybody thinks like you do. Uh, evangelical Christians and Mormons could freely talk about Sabbath because they're all going to be talking about Sunday. Jews and Adventists could easily freely talk about it 
knowing that everybody's going to think it's Saturday. Outside of that, yeah. Since the Puritans, there has been a push in Christianity to, at least since the Puritans, to treat Sunday as the Sabbath. And yeah, it's... So it's funny that she she references that because most Christians who seriously consider Sunday to be the Sabbath consider that to be because the day was changed, either they'll say it was by Paul or some will even just say by the Catholic Church and it's the Christian day of Sabbath, in which case you don't reference Exodus because that's talking about the Jewish Sabbath. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the Christian Sabbath. And if you have the idea of the Christian Sabbath and the Jewish Sabbath, you don't talk about Exodus. Yeah. And if you restrict voting on a Saturday, you're going to get everybody pissed off. Uh huh. Racist or not. And talking about the Sabbath, quoting Exodus in the Senate, where there are a lot of Jewish members. <laughs> And they're just, they're just, you know that picture of um, Captain Picard where he's holding his head in his hands out of exasperation? Mm-hmm. That's what I imagine everybody was doing. was going, oh my God, woman, shut up. The Senate chaplain is an Adventist? Yeah. Like, seriously, what was she thinking? She was thinking that everybody thinks like her. Yeah. Or if they don't, they should. And the blue laws. The, the blue laws the being... Blue laws, the imaginary... Restrictions on Sunday to make it so that people don't have excuses to not go to church. That you don't want those distractions on the Lord's Day. Uh, Now, FFRF, in their press release about this, um, got it wrong as to what she was um, misidentifying with Exodus 20, verse 18, um, saying that that talked about slavery. No, that was in Exodus 21, verse 8. 20, verse 18 is when the people tell Moses that they're afraid of God and that they don't want God to talk to them anymore. They need God to talk to them through Moses. Well, it is terrifying to have some big booming voice in your head uh, because you're either poisoned or schizophrenic. Yeah, So, but, but it's so funny that she got the wrong verse for what she was She saying. got the wrong verse. It's funnier that FFRF quoted the wrong verse, too. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, okay, general confusion all around. Yeah. It would have been hilarious if it had been about slavery. It would have. It was a very catchy clickbait. Yes. Yes. uh, Headline. Um, Like the plantation picture thing. Just, it just writes its own story. It absolutely does. Panera Bread has been sued over Tammy McCoy's firing in 2019. Or actually, no, in 2020. Okay. Um, so she got hired in, in late 2019, did a good job, everything was fine. Then she took a break with the general manager and the assistant manager, uh, Lori Dubs and Carrie Ann Show. when Carrie asked her about her faith. McCoy answered honestly, said that she was a pagan. Because you think that that's an opportunity to get other people to understand your point of view better. Not realize that you just stepped in a huge pile of manure and that you're going to get yourself fired. Yeah. According to the lawsuit, Carrie Show made a face immediately and said, you're going to hell. While Lori Dubs, the manager, started nodding her head in agreement. Yeah. A couple days later, they started cutting her hours and even told her that, quote, your hours are being cut until you find God. Oh, they quote. really, oh, they really, uh screwed themselves over then over the next couple weeks they made the workplace more and more hostile uh they would tell her that her religion was false that she needed to believe in god that her soul would be condemned to hell and that they were praying for her lost soul oh that is so barfy so mccoy talked to the district manager asked for a transfer to another location got turned down. She asked the manager for the number for human resources and was told, quote, if you call HR about this, you'll be fired on the spot, end quote. Okay, so it went all the way up the chain. Panera is like... She found corporate's number on her own and called them, and they never called her back. And then she was told to put in her resignation. She refused... And then both she and her husband, who also worked there, were fired. Yeah, this is why these laws exist. And yeah, I would, t- I, not that I have, I think I've been to Panera Bread once and it was very disappointing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will not ever go back. This is obviously 
uh, corporate culture. Yeah. And it's they, they're probably the kind to do like retreats and they all pray to Jesus and all this crazy stuff. Yeah. I w- oh, man, I wish there was a whistleblower in that. You know, and, and, and I've, I've had if you're going to be a Christian company, come out as a Christian company. Right. Um, I've, I've had experiences both as a manager and as not a manager, as an atheist. As a manager, I made a point of not openly talking about being an atheist. That wasn't relevant to my job. And I didn't want to create an opportunity for somebody to turn on me because of that. Happened to me. I mean, I can't prove it, but... um. A coworker kept bringing it up, and I finally said, "Oh, yeah, I don't really believe in that." And just unleashed a torrent of very personal questions about, "Well, how can you believe in this? And how can you believe that?" It was very shortly after that that everything went bad. It got yeah. very uncomfortable. They pushed me out. It worked. Um, yeah. she, they were smart about it, and they didn't actually, you know, she didn't actually say or write anything down. Right. <laughs> so this sounds like this person's got quite the paper trail of. Oh yeah. Of yeah. Quotes to uh, back her up. Yeah. I, I God that pagan and then the immediate dis- distrust and disgust is like you don't understand what pagan really is. So no, and to a relatively typical conservative Christian, pagan would be scarier than atheist. Scarier, but not more hated. Ugh. Less hated because of like a, a a doubt that they really exist, and that actually be confronted by a witch by somebody who is a servant of Satan. Yeah, yeah, that's I'm not surprised. Okay, so I just found a hilarious little quote about pan Panera Bread, um, fast food satanic symbols. Have you ever heard of that? No. They go through all the fast food restaurants and show how satanic they are. <laughs> So here's a picture of somebody at Panera Bread in 2018. Here she is. First, she's holding a loaf of bread like a baby. (laughs) That is Semiramis and Tammuz, or the Queen of Heaven and Tammuz. Mother Natura, Gaia, and her baby Horus, the reincarnation sun god. On the loaf, there are three sixes. Six, six, six. There's a big six for her arm and chest area. Her eyes are like sixes as well. This is loaded with sixes. That's just hilarious that people will find this shit anywhere Yeah, for a person holding bread. And yes, if it's a large loaf of bread, you tend to hold it in the crook of your arm. Um, but I'm really hoping that this, uh, this lawsuit goes through. And, oh, yeah. Uh, and she gets millions. Uh, I, I expect that it'll go one of two ways. Either she wins because she documented everything, or she loses because the judge will say... Well, it's your word against theirs. Yeah. And corporate's going to deny everything. Of course. They're, they would be stupid not to. You know, most big corporations like that don't actually have local lawyers. They will just hire a local lawyer to deny everything for them. All right. Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson has signed into law some new legislation that will protect the... Religious liberty of healthcare workers and organizations. God, we're back at that again. Yeah. Considering how important healthcare ear is right now. Uh huh. And considering how bad it is right now, don't throw another wrench in it by letting people choose to not provide services. That's just yeah, fucking stupid. Um, this does not. This only applies to non-emergency treatments because emergency care is protected under the Emergency Care and Active Labor Protections Act. Which tons of places ignore anyway. Um, So this will, it allows providers to not participate in non-emergency treatments that violate their conscience. Um, This is what's under the, the category of refusal laws but are also sometimes called conscience laws. Um, NARL, for example, views them as permitting a broad range of individuals and institutions to refuse to provide, pay, counsel, or even refer for medical treatment affecting mostly women. Um, These are laws that are broad enough to allow pharmacists to refuse to fill prescriptions, to allow insurers to 
refuse to cover procedures or medications. Yeah, healthcare providers have always been free to refuse to do things that violates their conscience. But there has traditionally been various lines drawn between how much conscience is the doctor allowed within the realm of that, that professional discretion? How much are nurses allowed? And like, they've always gotten more of that than say pharmacists and med techs and insurance companies who are taking an order from somebody else and filling a bottle or completing paperwork or running a test. Like a med tech should never have grounds to not run an HIV test because someone might be gay. Yeah. And a pharmacist should never be concerned about filling prep because someone's gay and is concerned about getting HIV. But this would allow that. Yeah. This isn't just about protecting fetuses. No. Oh, that is the big one. It's this has the potential at its broadest to affect almost anyone and everyone who whose life ends up interacting with healthcare in a way that is not consistent with the beliefs of their local healthcare organizations and whoever happens to be working that day. When you can argue that the Bible supports slavery, <laughs> and you use your Bible as your uh -huh. go-to ethics, you should not be in healthcare because you don't have to help everybody equally. So yeah. if you have a big problem with that, get into a, go somewhere else, mm -hmm. get a different job because you're not helping anybody if you're not helping everybody. So yeah, this is, this is one of those where, yeah, if you have a problem filling prep or birth control prescriptions, you should not be a pharmacist. If you have a problem with installing IUDs. But that's Christian discrimination. If you, uh. if you're a Jehovah's Witness, you shouldn't be a blood banker. <laughs> it's just kind of, yeah, part of the expectation. Uh-huh. Um, but you can't go into a field and expect people to bend over backwards for you. If perf in certain, in certain light. I mean, obviously I'm not talking generically about everything, but um, it, when it comes to religion and healthcare, that's a pretty strong one. If performing your Basic job functions goes against your religious beliefs. You shouldn't do that job. You shouldn't have entered into that career. It's not good for you. No. I mean, think, yeah, if that's a mental toll on you, then for your own good, you need to get work somewhere else. I'm honestly surprised they haven't allowed churches to ha have their own pharmacists. <laughs> I, mean, I, I would not be surprised if that became the new, new thing. Uh, well, the... Catholic Church, Adventist Church, Methodist, and Baptist churches have their own pharmacies at their That's hospitals. True. Yeah, you're right. And for our final story, we have Sudan. This is not the first time we've talked about Sudan in the last, I think, year, as they have been working on liberalizing their laws, modernizing after the uh, overthrow of their of Omar al-Bashir, their dictator, who ruled for 30 years starting in 1983, and instituted pretty strict Sharia law. Mm. He was deposed. They've been working on, on reestablishing peace. Uh, South Sudan splitting off from the country and taking most of their oil, and thus most of their economy away, really destabilized Sudan. And Sudan has been left with still civil wars, because the rebellion from the mostly Christian South was not the only civil war they had. It was just the most successful civil war that they couldn't beat. Mm. And so they have been negotiating with rebel groups in the South, um, including, or, or excuse me, in the West, including uh, Darfur, which I know got some attention 10 years ago or so, uh, some possible genocide going on there. Yeah, that was, God, I remember all those hashtags. Yeah. Um, they have met, they have discussed, and they have agreed on a peace accord. Part of that is for Sudan to turn into a secular democracy with guaranteed freedom of religion and separation of church and state. That is awesome. That has been agreed upon, and the provisional government in Sudan will now be working on codifying that into their new constitution. You know, fingers crossed it actually goes through. Yeah, yeah. It's a provisional government. It's in a very unstable country. Uh, right now, the military is backing the provisional government, 
and kind of leading the provisional government. Yeah, I happen to know that there are people here in Boise who would love to be able to go home. Yeah. yeah. You know, they escaped civil wars and uh-huh. pers- persecution for their religion. It'd be nice to be able to go home to a democracy that didn't kill you for yeah. who you prayed to. Yeah, and it's 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 nice to see that happening. And, and it's a case where the most... Kind of makes me embarrassed for the U.S., though. Since we're lo- actively losing that. Yeah. 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 We're backsliding. Yep. Well, see, they've got a... And it's okay, it's something that actually makes me kind of nervous for the future of the U.S. Because it's a case where a Muslim majority is trying to keep... Trying to restore peace with their Christian minority. After after decades of violent, bloody, horrible fights, like actual violent warfare fights with guns and bullets and dead people. A lot of blood has been shed over ethnic and religious divisions to get to this point. I hope the U.S. can restore it without that being necessary to bring it back. Yeah. At this point, I just hope the U.S. just doesn't pull out completely and leave them to fend for themselves because we're backsliding so bad, we can't support other people getting progressive. Oh, the U.S. isn't helping out Sudan right now at all. Oh, okay. Sudan is doing this on their own, mostly. Um, I'm sure they've got some U.N. observers present, but yeah, this is something they're doing on their own, trying to... Oh, I thought you said somewhere that the U.S. was involved. No, no, no. It's just sad the U.S. is doing worse. Yeah. It's going the wrong way. All right, we've got feedback. After the live stream, we kept getting comments off of YouTube. Hey, about how terrible the sound quality was? Nope. Oh, good. No, 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 none of that. <laughs> um, from Gene McGrath, we got congratulations on 400 episodes. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Gene. From Randy via YouTube. Okay, we got three comments from Randy. <laughs> good old Randy. First one. Y'all's the bomb. Happy 400. Yay. Oh, yeah. Second one. May people hated it, but I didn't mind it. Raised by Wolves also had the Worshippers of Soul. Oh, is it? Uh, I'm guessing that's a book. Hold on, I'm looking probably. At that. that should probably be many people American hated it. American TV series. Oh. Science fiction drama TV series that premiered 2020. Oh. So, okay, all I see here are androids and skin-tight latex spacesuits. It might be worth checking out. All right. Yeah. We're we almost done with Shit's Creek, so we need a new series. Yep, so we can check that out next. Um, Raised by Wolves would be a definite reference to... Um, Ro- Rome. Romulus and Remus. Remus, yeah. Um, the, the legendary founders of Rome. So that is that sounds pretty cool. You gotta love a, a sci-fi... Oh, it's a- HBO Max. Oh. I don't think we have access to any of that. No, bummer. Some nice skin tight suits, though. <laughs> and another one from Randy was, what will the Catholic Church do when we finally develop the tech to turn stem, turn stem cells into gem cells and make babies from one individual? So a clone. Yes. Maybe with, of course, you could do a clone and they could still have different um, gene expression. And you'd have, you could have a very un- Look alike clone with just a few genes switched over. I have screen capture from the Soul Invictus Warriors of Neat. It looks good. Yeah. Dang it, HBO, you suck. The Catholic Church would condemn these people as being inherently disordered, being counter to God's plan, being disordered by birth, and flat out reject it and throw out anybody who has kids through that method, but then turn a blind eye when one of those people tries to join their church because they want the the money. Yeah. And then uh, via the website from Kevin, a new international officially registered U.S. church believes all voting days are religious holidays, legally allowing all members to get off work to vote or vote by mail. They also spend each Sunday in meditation on the nature of voter suppression. Um, This is the Universal Suffrage Church at universalsuffragechurch.org. It was founded on June 1, 2020 in Nashville, Tennessee. 
May peace and suffrage be with you. <laughs> That's awesome. 2021 holidays. The holy days. January 1st, January 3rd, Oath of Office Day. January 5th is the Senate runoff election for Georgia. January 20th for Inauguration Day. February 1st for National Freedom Day. Uh, March 5th is three-fifths day <laughs> day of mourning march 7th is bloody sunday april 6th is state and local elections in wisconsin and colorado springs colorado may 4th is for local elections for ohio and michigan i mean that's a lot of holidays when you really think yeah. about it foundation day is june 1st one year anniversary <laughs> primary elections independence day young voters day it's the day after Independence Day. Anniversary of the 26th Amendment. Anniversary of the 1965th uh, Voting Rights Act. VRA Day on August 6th. Suffragette Day. National Voter Registration Day. Election Day. International Human Rights Day. Universal Suffrage Day. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, sounds cool. Um, check it out. The link will be in the show notes. I will not be meditating. Fuck that. I will not I be. Not. Yes, I will definitely not do any meditating on voter suppression. Uh, if I'm going to engage in meditation, it is to try to decrease stress, not increase it. Oh, I just figured that there's no way I can, I, I would have 30 seconds to myself <laughs> Yeah. to think about it. And we have a new patron. Oh, yay. Steve. Thank you, Steve. Thank you very much, Steve. Lauren, thank you for powering through. Thank you. Even without a milkshake. Barbaric, but I did it. And listeners, remember, not all those who wander are lost. Thank you for listening to another episode of Atheist Nomads. You can find show notes and contact information at atheistnomads.com. Follow us on Twitter at Atheist Nomads. And like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash atheistnomads. Please subscribe to the show in iTunes, Stitcher, or your podcatcher of choice. And while you're there, feel free to leave us a review. The music is courtesy of Sturdy Fred. Until next time, this has been The Atheist Nomads.